G'day fellas and welcome to a China guide that is going to get you a whole lot of rating on the 1v1 rank ladder. Now you can also use this in team games as well, but make sure you communicate to your ally exactly what you're doing. Now I've just returned from Germany, I'm in Australia, I've been in Australia for about 36 hours at the moment and I figured it's time to make the first YouTube video for you guys because I've had plenty of people asking me for an up-to-date China build. Now I did post up-to-date China builds I think about two months ago, but China builds change all the time. So this one is going to take you through the best strategy that you can use. So it's going to be a one versus one build primarily here for Chukunu timing attacks. So we're going to be looking for a really fast Song Dynasty and then looking to get out as many Chukunu as possible without stalling villager production and at the same time making sure we kill the enemy. So the, the key to this attack is that we're not going to be pushing out of our base until we're ready because if we push out early, we may potentially lose a lot of our units to enemy cavalry. And as a result, we want to make sure that we've got everything we need before we push. We're also going to be pushing with three rams, not one, because three rams is going to actually kill things. One ram, it's just going to be laughed at. So let's get into it. How do we do this? Let's go. So all of your villagers, your when you get into the game, the first thing you're going to do is queue a, uh, an Imperial official and a villager. Only queue one villager, because otherwise you have to press QQ on your keyboard. So for me, I press EQ. And then I'm going to select all my villagers and I'm going to right click the nearest straggler tree. Okay, I'm not going to go to these trees down here. I'm going to go to a straggler tree. All right. And then from there, after I've done that, I'm going to take my scout and I'm going to move them, move him towards my sheep. All right. So let us, let us go in. So you can see that we've got everything in queue. Everything's happening. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move our sheep, our first sheep, just one sheep into position. What I like to call prime position. I don't know why I call that, but uh, I, 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 you could probably call it pole position if you want, depending on where you are in the world. And this is where we pause it. Because right now you can see a mill has been placed. And we're not placing this mill on the berries. We'll get into the reasons as to why we do that, but you, you need to be really careful here. And I would advocate that you also try to zoom in. It can be difficult clicking this sheep because what we're about to do is going to take some micro. So if you time this perfectly, and you should because you're a good player, your Imperial official is going to come out and that's going to be your warning. Okay, watch watch the town center. Imperial official is going to come out. As soon as it does, your villagers are about to get ready to drop off their wood. Now, you don't want them to drop it off at the town center. Instead, you want them to build the mill while holding the wood. So you can see we've selected all the villagers. I, I would actually recommend putting these into a control group too. That way it's easier to select them and you don't select the Imperial official by uh, accident. And then from there, you're going to get just one of them and command him to kill the sheep or her to kill the sheep and then get that same guy back over onto the mill. From there, what's going to happen is they're all going to drop off the wood at the mill. And because it's being supervised, it's going to give you 72 instead of 60. And this is important. Keep this in mind because later we are going to need this wood. So now we're going to keep all of our villages on food. This is the theme of the build order. In fact, the, mo the majority of this build order, we're just keeping villages on food. So it makes it very easy if you're new to the game or if you're new to China because China is quite a complex civilization. I know that the opening might seem a lot more complex than, say, your your typical French opening, but that is just China. China is... Uh, you've got to have a math degree just to start with China. Um, but uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to rally out a villager. You ideally just want to do this before your 10th villager. If it is your 10th villager, it's not a big deal. Uh, when I say villager, I mean like when you're 10 out of 10 pop. So for me, I think I did this at 8 out of 10 pop. So that's my like the ninth unit that, that's coming out here. So not a big deal. And I'm just putting this village on my berries, okay? Because uh, I'm going to need a village on my berries by the time I take my berries. Um, and so the reason that we're not taking our berries right now is to minimize our walk distance from the town center. So when you... Ideally what's happening, okay, is your villagers are dropping off tax to the mill. And every time they do that... It's going to be a little bit of... It's a loss of efficiency. And say, you, if you've got your mill out here and your Imperial official collects the tax uh, and you drop it off at the town center and you come back, the villagers are going to be dropping off their food and they're not going to be receiving the extra 20% from supervision. Remember, you get an extra 20% resources instead of it being 10 dropped off, it's 12 dropped off. Instead of 15 with wheelbarrow, it's 18 dropped off. So you want to maximize that. And at the same time, you also want to maximize your efficiency cute note here we actually are gathering three wood from this uh but we'll talk about that later sorry so much to talk about here uh and i, I apologize you probably just want the build order and if so uh sorry you're in you're in for the the ted talk um so we're maximizing efficiency look the the, the the long story here is this is what you need to do that's it okay don't put it on your berries put it next to your tc much easier 
We're taking three wood from the wild elm tree as well, our straggler, just because once we built our village, keep in mind we can garrison in the village, we're left with 47 out of 50 wood, and we want that 50 wood because we're going to go build a mining camp shortly. And now, once again, we rally out to food. Meanwhile, our scout, what did we command our scout to do? All we're doing is a loop around the base. We don't care about the neutral sheep out here on the map. You can see that there's going to be plenty of neutral sheep, you know, out here. Look, there's two sheep that you can go and get. whoop de doo Who cares? All you care about are your five starting sheep. You get two town, two uh, around your town center, and then you get a further five around your base. And you can see I've collected five, so I'm going to start sending them back now. You can see I've been lucky. I've had a couple more spawn behind the back, but I don't care about that. What I care about are those five. Now, I've been a little bit cheeky here. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm abusing a bug. I'm just probably exploiting a mechanic. So, um, your, your, your sheep... They can be or they can be tasked to a house that is blueprinted. So you can see right here, this is a blueprinted house. It's not built. So I'm just using one of these villages and I'm just bringing the sheep in. You just right click the, the, the sheep onto the house. Uh, if you do it perfectly, you can actually get them to be like running nonstop. Uh, but here, I, I kind of mess it up. I, I go a little bit greedy, but basically it's just to get them back to the town center as fast and allow my scout to continue on to the map and get these sheep because these sheep might be contested sheep. You know, I might be running into an enemy scout at some point and, I, you know, the, the sooner I get out onto the map, the better it is for me. But at the same time, it can be a bit dangerous if the enemy scout comes in and spots this happening. So, you know, you got to be careful. Watch out. Anyway. We continue on. Now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take my initially grouped villagers here, and I'm just going to deduct one out of them. I'm just going to have five. Now, the, the key timing here is 210. You're looking for a 210 timing, okay? Because you can see we're stacking up lots and lots of food at this point in time. So what are we going to do? We're going to take five villagers at 2 minutes 20, and we're going to drop them off. Boom, boom, boom. Everyone drops off. You can see, I don't know which vills we got here. There you go. The, these, are the, these are the vills here. So I, I, I clicked off this one. And we're just going to tell them to gather wood. That's all we want them to do. Just gather wood. Okay. And the town center, it's still rallying out here to uh, the mill. And you're just going to drop off whenever you get, have 40 gold at this mill. You're just going to pick it up, drop it off at the town center, and drop it back off. That's very easy. You don't have to worry about uh, shift clicking villages or anything. So now with this next wood, you don't have to worry about whether it gets dropped off at the town center or not. You can see some of them did, some of them won't. And then you're just going to build a mining camp. Do not shift click them. Just build the mining camp and then when they build the mining camp it's going to drop off the wood we already have 20 so there's going to be 30 that pops up right there uh, and that's going to be the next wood for your lumber camp so the idea he here is that we're minimizing walking distance and subsequently increasing efficiency there's another 40 that's come in and now we reach a very critical point because we're about to age up hope you're still with me so Villagers drop off and we're up to 180 gold. What I'm going to do now is I'm looking for 2930 on the gold mine. 2930 and I'm going to command all my villagers to drop off. And now we reach a really difficult part of the game for all new and aspiring China players. This is the time for you to place your Imperial Academy. And this is going to take a lot of time for you to get used to, to perfect, and to, to just... You know, I, I'm, I'm just, I just want to reiterate, this isn't even a China guide. This is just me explaining the build order, okay? Uh, so the best way for me to explain how you should place your Imperial Academy, try and get your starting um, buildings as close as possible to it. You want to prioritize the mill that you start with and the lumber camp that you start with. If you can also get mining camps on the stone and the gold, that's also really good, especially the gold, but mainly these two and then the gold that's your last priority so we've got a really good spot right here and it's adjacent to every single one you can see that we'll look tile right there tile right there and then we're going to put our lumber camp right here now why would we do this once again minimizing walking distance for the imperial official when he come or when he or she i think it's a he he comes and drops it off he's not gonna have to walk all the way you know if you put this bad boy over here they're gonna have to walk out here and then walk all the way back you don't want that you just want it in out in out nice and easy like that it's going to maximize your efficiency increase the gold that you're getting from your imperial officials so from here you can see that we're effectively dropping off our 50 gold at a time and obviously two more drops that's going to give you 200 gold which is going to be enough for you to reach song dynasty now the reason why we're doing this the reason why we're having so many villagers on food to start with is because we're maximizing the efficiency from the extra 20 percent from the imperial official there are other build orders that get you up to song dynasty none of them at all in a similar time and definitely none at all with the efficiency that we've got here doing this uh with the imperial official uh, but anyway, it's just one uh, villager to age up as well. By the way, you don't need two, don't need three. Just one is more than enough. And now you can see we're about to hit that age up timing. We've got plenty of, of gold. I actually just dropped off the 40 there. Let these guys still gather the 50 gold. So you want them to do their final drop off because you're going to need this gold that we just cashed in to age up. So technically, yes, we can age up earlier right now, but this is all part of it. So then we're going to build the barbican on the gold mine. Very important. We need to protect the gold mine and we want to make sure that our villages are adjacent. So don't put the barbican in front of the gold mine. You want to make sure it's on the gold mine. It kind of, to, to be honest, it depends on the city you're playing against. If you're playing against the English, you would put the barbican uh, 
in, in front of the gold mine, but against any other sieve, you'd put it on the gold mine uh, just, just because, well, you don't want to get hit with knights, that sort of thing. Okay, so now the age ups come through. We've got five villagers on the Barbican and one villager over here on the uh, Imperial Academy. Uh, we've moved all of our villagers here from food. And what we're going to be doing, and so you can see we've stacked up a whole bunch of food. We're going to be making an Imperial official from the Imperial Academy, and we're also going to be making more villagers from the town center. And we're going to be rallying this one villager uh, to food. And so that's going to give us a nice amount of food uh, income. And then all of these villagers are going to be going out to wood. And we're also going to be moving the Imperial official over to wood as well. And that's because we need to get our, our uh, archery range up as quickly as possible. So from that, we're just scouting around the enemy base we're up against the marlians here it's, it's not it's not really that relevant i wasn't really paying attention obviously it's an ai i don't care that much about it and we're once again dropping off all of that delicious wood we're not getting any upgrades at this stage even though we could probably afford them we're still not going to be doing it uh and we're going to queue an imperial official immediately you can see right there we've got one in queue uh and we're going to continue once we hit that that uh that threshold so you can see now we're just going to slow it down so it's a five minute age up on the song dynasty so obviously it can be faster we can get a much faster timing than that i can get you down to 4 30 if you want but it's not worth it don't bother uh, excuse me um but now we're going to be looking to drop the archery range and when we do drop the archery range we're immediately transferring villagers off wood so we're only going to keep eight villagers on wood that's all we need for now now it depends how you want to play this whether you want to go into spearmen or whether you want to go 100 percent shukunu now i would advocate for going for spearmen it just makes your life a lot easier uh so probably probably do do that uh, but it depends on how you want to play it. But anyway, so now we've got the second Imperial official out. The main one, the, the first Imperial official is going to move back over to food. And we're going to start rallying to food as well. We've probably been rallying this whole time to food. I think we rallied like one villager out here to make the llama camp. That was about it. So don't get excited about that, kids. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know why I called you guys kids then. Um, I'm assuming there's some children watching this. So you guys don't get excited. Adults, get excited because that's fucking amazing. Um, and so we're still, we still have eight villagers out here. I think this dude, this dude here is probably going to stay... How many we got? Yeah, eight. Um, so, and then then once they've collected a little bit of gold, you're going to start supervising the uh, archery range. So now that we're supervising the range, it's producing much faster. Six seconds instead of 15 seconds. So basically think of this as 2.5 archery ranges. We're also maintaining villager production. And the key here is that we're working towards a blacksmith. We want to put down our blacksmith and we always want to put our blacksmith down on the edge right on this little corner right here because it uses up a lot of space. We want to make sure that we save all that space for archery ranges or anything else. Uh, now, there is going to be downtime that you have with your archery range as well just because you're not going to be able to support 2.5 at this stage. So what you're going to do with your Imperial official is just get them to move around. Uh, uh, typically, like once you get up to 40 it's a pretty decent number so once you've created uh five units uh you can then get your imperial official to go out because you can see 66 in here 52 in here 39 in in this like th there's 160 gold in here ready to be picked up straight away because keep in mind they've got that cap of of 40 gold and you're just going to continue adding in additional uh um additional chukunu at this stage and look we're already up to eight chukunu at six minutes 30. this is kind of crazy if you go watch like some of the pros they're not even getting up to song dynasty until like five minutes 50 and then they put their archery range down like we're so far ahead of like some of the best players in the game right now just with this build order because of how crisp it is uh, and of course we've got that early village that we went for so we don't even have to think about houses for all this time we've just been chilling out not adding in houses uh, but once you get to 12 villages on food what i want you to do is start rallying out to wood that's going to be your key trigger in your head Okay, 12 villagers on food. Now I start going out to wood because that's going to be where your wood comes in for your rams. So now behind this, we're also getting plus one range attack. This is really important. Before you push out, you need to have this. It is a non-negotiable. Do not push out unless you have plus one ranged attack. Uh, and, and preferably plus one ranged armor as well is going to be really helpful. We're going to continue adding Imperial officials uh, as we go on. So I think three Imperial officials is absolutely fine for this build order. Uh, one for the archery range, one for the mill, and then just uh, one collecting gold and kind of like hovering on the lumber camp. But you can see that we're, we're like really starting to stack up gold in here as well. 98 in that one, only 16 in that bad boy, 10 in the mining camp, but like 100 in this one uh, or 100 in that one. So it, it's, it's quite a lot. And now we're back over on the um, the archery range and so we're very happy at this point so seven minutes 30 into the game what's what's happening at that point well maybe your enemies added the second town center maybe they're starting to poke and prod your base this is more than enough to defend and you want to know the best thing about this strategy even if your enemy knows it's coming they probably can't stop it uh because this is so powerful and i, I wouldn't be surprised if it genuinely gets nerfed uh it's, it's something that I, a good friend of mine has been doing i think he got to like top 30 um just using this this single strategy in every single matchup on every single map uh it wasn't this precise build order he was actually using a worse build order so look if he maximized his, or if he um you know min maxed his build order he'd be doing amazingly 
So at this point, we're just continuing uh, to, to rally out to wood. Now, you can also add in upgrades as well. Don't be afraid to do that. In fact, you, you will start to notice your gold going up once you get out your fourth Imperial official. So you can see I've got the fourth Imperial official out. So he's going to go around collecting the gold. There we go. Another 40 gold coming in. And that gold is quickly going to take off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a Rax. Now, against someone against a sieve like the French, you, kinda, you probably want to add this in... Um, or you, you probably want to just pay a bit more attention to your barracks. So maybe even think about adding uh, an extra three or four vills just over to food, uh, just simply because you're going to need a lot of food uh, for all your spears. Uh, and another thing to note is, is always build your production buildings uh, within the radius of your Imperial Academy. Uh, I, I will try and remember at the end of this video just to show you guys exactly how to do that because there's a very specific way to do it and there's actually a rule that you should follow with it. It can be hard to learn, but once you do master it, it's going to save your base building quite a lot. So anyway, uh, at this point, we're, we're picking up our upgrades where possible. You can see we're also getting Iron Undermesh here, and we're also going to be getting Siege uh, Engineering. You don't want any downtime on these bad boys because you are going to be pushing out soon. E even in 30 seconds, like, you're going to be ready to roll, right? So you can see this force is starting to get serious. 25 Jukunu. That's a total of 5 damage times 3. 15 damage times 25. I don't have good math, so I don't know what that is, but I can tell you now it's a lot. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of damage that, that's getting pumped out into your enemy, and we're just producing. And another thing to note, and th this is a hot tip for all you players out there, all you gamers out there. I know you, there's some Beastie Cutie fans. Um, you're probably going to be using uh, control groups for your military production buildings. And one of the things that you'll do, let's say I, I use control four. So you put this guy in control four. So every time you press control four, it comes to this. And then you might build a barracks. And what you'll do is you, you click on this guy and then you'll press shift four. And that will add this guy to the same control group. But the thing is, when you press four, it's just going to show you the stuff for the archery range. And you don't want that. Why don't you want that? Well, because you're not going to make archers and you're not going to make crossbows. Why aren't you going to make archers? Because you're making Jukunu. Why aren't you going to make crossbows? Because they're in age three. You don't need them. So what are we going to do? As soon as we finish our barracks, what we're going to do is we're going to select it and we're just going to call that control four. And you can see it removes the four from this archery range. And then from there, we're going to double click our archery ranges over here or just single click, single click if you've only got one. And then we're going to press shift four on that. And that's going to add it to the control group. And now what that's going to do is give priority to the barracks. So when I press four on my keyboard, it's going to put the spearman first and then the palace guard and then the hand cannon and shukunu. And what this does is it enables you to press four, Q, R, Q, R, Q, R, Q, R, when you're away from home and you don't have to think about, oh, I need to press tab to get to my spearman. You can just simply go Q, R, Q, R and make spearman, shukunu, spearman, shukunu. And you don't have to think. It's easy. So that, that, that's my hot tip for you guys. If you didn't get it, go back and watch it. I'm not going to explain it again. Um, okay, so uh, we're also just picking up, up upgrades as well. Just get upgrades uh, whenever you want. So I, I would recommend uh, top priority. It's going to be... Um, uh, wood, uh, double broad axe, really important, uh, as well as your forestry upgrade because th these upgrades are basically free uh, for China. Well, not not the uh, the double broad axe, but rather the, uh, the other one, the forestry. Uh, you also probably want to pick up uh, horticulture quite early on as well. You can see, look, look how much gold I'm stacking up at this point. That's because I picked up that uh, up upgrade here. So you can probably even go with like taking these villages off gold. That's how much that's how much resources you get from um, th this uh, imperial examinations, uh, and it, it just really brings it in. You can see, like, he's pulling in 80 gold a pop. Uh, so now we're just going to push out at, at 10 minutes. So we don't have a big army. Uh, so we've got 6 spears and 28 Jukunu. So one of the things I would recommend is scout your enemy. If, you, if you've got your scout, now keep in mind China uh, has good quality scouts before uh, they reach the Song Dynasty. So in the Tang Dynasty. But after that, it's, it's quite small. Uh, so you need to be scouting out your enemy and seeing what composition they're going for. If they're going, like, 100% cavalry, then, you know, make sure you add in a few more spears than 6. Uh, but this is the kind of timing you want to be looking for something like this now um i mean I, I don't think i need to add a market and and, and buy wood like you, you just keep doing this and you're going to be fine and you can see the number of villages we've got out here keep in mind we have song dynasty and so now we've we've just added in the mill for berries at the at 10 minute and 30 mark let's call it that you can see actually we've exhausted this let's call it the 10 minute mark so we this mill has lasted us 10 minutes and we've been able to collect tax from it the entire time we've been able to, to have it really close to our towns and it's been super efficient super safe obviously as well uh and it, it, it's, just, it's just wonderful. So just make sure you're doing this. There's no point in putting... Oh, sorry. There's no point in putting your mill out far. Treat this berry patch like it's not even part of your base. And then move to it later on when you need further resources. Like when you need further resources from here. Uh, the other thing to note is we're always putting our villagers around our resources. So we've got a village back here. You know, in, in case we do chop through eventually. Maybe a raid comes in. It's easy for us to get to. Uh, but we don't want to put it in the range of our Imperial Academy. Uh, I mean, you can do this if, you, if you're planning on deleting it later. Just because it's, it's a really... It's, it's really good not to. Um, so, let's continue on. 
So you can see now putting in uh, down our second battering ram and then the third battering ram we'd build with 16 units just so that we can try and like sync up the timing. So you'd want to start like the, the two uh, first ones and then you get the third one in because you're obviously not going to have the resources for three at a time. And then you're going to push in with that. And you're just going to make sure that all of your buildings are rallied. And then you're just going to make sure that you add new, new, new buildings to your rally group. And you're just going to shift queue them up to the front like this. And that's going to be it. Nice and easy. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, and then if the town center starts shooting your units, then you laugh at them because, uh, well, they're dead. And that, that's it. Well, I, I actually surrender there. The, the AI did beat me. Uh, but I will show you guys now just how to, how to lay out your bases. Because this can be one of the hardest things to do as China. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on... Uh, uh, let's just go very high uh, for the moment. I'm not going to put cheats on just because I'm not going to actually age up. I'm just going to demonstrate where we would or how we would do our base building uh, as China because it's different every time with China, but there, there's a couple of rules that you can follow um, to make it much easier for you. And uh, I'll just quickly go through those rules and explain them. So what we're going to do is just by starting off. So, you know, we, we would collect the, the wood from here. Uh, we would drop down our mill like that. So that's the spot there. And then we would obviously expand out over onto here uh, and we would probably think about putting down our um our village now we don't want to put our village in, in, a, in a silly place right because we don't we don't want it to when we put down our imperial academy uh we don't want to make we don't want it to be using up space but at the same time it, it's not a big deal if it is because we can always delete it and add it in later to another space it, it's it's very uh, efficient early on not to do it but for the sake of this let's let's go ahead and do it anyway so maybe we put our village out over here Okay, and now we need to think about our, our age up. So where is our age up going to be? Well, as I said before, our following rules are must target mill, must target uh, lumber camp, should target mining camp on gold. So if we have anything that can meet those conditions, and of course lumber camp as well, uh, so we can put lumber camp right here. It's a nice little spot. So do we have something that can meet that, that condition? There you go. Perfect. So we can do that. You can put it anywhere around here, but I would always recommend having it up against the town center just because it opens up a couple of extra blocks. You see out there, so you only need one block of your building to be in the Imperial uh, uh, Imperial Academy, and that's going to double the tax of it. So I would recommend putting it here, even though it does seem a little bit further away from, you know, fr from the Lumber Camp or something like that. I, I, I would still recommend it here. So we put that bad boy down. Every Everyone's going to get to work on that. And, you know, uh, we, we've got the Barbican of the Sun going up as well. We're playing against the English, so I'm, we'll, we'll just chuck it down right there. It's probably a bit harder for him to go all the way around. And so that's what our base building looks like initially. Now, where do you put that first um, that first archery range, that first barracks, the first and, and anything? Because this applies to all Chinese um, in, uh, landmarks. So the best way to do it, um, the, the best rule uh, that I, I can give you is this. Corners are for big buildings, okay? So your blacksmith is always going to go on the edge. And from there, we're going to work on that basis. So you, it's, it becomes very easy once you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to go two, or one, two. Oh, not that one. That was, a, that was a little bit off, a little bit awkward. One, two, and then again, over here. So that's essentially the rule that we're following. And this would allow me, if every, if, if everything was, was uh, free right now or clear right now, I could actually build 32 military production buildings on... Well, in, in this position. So this is essentially it, the way that you want to follow it. And then once again, you know, you, you look to put your blacksmith on the corner. Uh, just a hot, just a hot tip. Oh, I think that's a market. Uh, just a hot tip. Don't put your astronomical clock tower in your Imperial Official, Imperial Academy range. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's terrible uh, to go in there. Uh, don't, don't even put your siege workshops in there. It's just, it's useless. Uh, so anyway, we move forward. So it, it's that same rule of... Uh, three by three by three. Now, there, there are exceptions to that. Like here, as an example, you can see that we wouldn't be able to fit uh, another military production facility here. So there's nothing wrong with just going like one there and then one there like that. So, you know, maybe maybe you want to make the base a little bit tighter or something like that. Uh, and then obviously one, once the uh, once the, the tax from this gets cleaned up, uh, you, you're going to delete it and then you can build a barracks in that spot as well. And so you can really start to see the way that it's forming. So the very first one that you would want to build would be the one that's closest to the military, the uh, Imperial Academy. But how do you know where to put it? That's a good question. How do you know where to put the first one so that it lines up? So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to divide the Imperial Academy into uh, in, into two blocks or, or by, by two blocks, two, two, two block segments. So the same size as a house is what you're going to do. And you're just going to look at the Imperial Academy like it's a, a bunch of a bunch of houses, essentially. And then you're going to make the barracks pick a side. So for me... I would be picking right here. So you can see that I want to keep this on the 
on the side of the middle house, or, or on the side of the middle of the landmark. I don't want it to cross that step. It always needs to stay on the side and it should, it doesn't have to be, it should be one space out on at least one side. And then, so from that, you can very easily follow the rules. Uh, so as an example right now, if we just go and restart, uh, and I, I will just put this this anywhere and just demonstrate how it works. Um, but essentially that is it. So from there, uh, you'd go one tile out and then from the middle, and you can do that on any side, it doesn't matter. So the, the most common thing that you will see people doing is uh, the Imperial Academy will be in line with the town center perfectly like this. And so that makes it really easy as well, because from there you can just go, okay, let's pretend that our our uh, village here is our blacksmith. And then you go barracks on the corner and then barracks, barracks, barracks. Another barracks will go there eventually. And then barracks here, barracks here, barracks here. And we just build the entire base like that uh, with our barracks. Uh, but obviously when it comes to putting down the first one, uh, so once again, you know, we our mill would probably go here. Uh, our... Uh, that one would go there and then our gold well there's no way we're getting our gold and our wood it's just impossible uh look you could you could probably get it actually let's test it i want to see if you can get it i didn't think you can get it it's probably going to be like two pixels off yeah look at that it's it's an, yeah oh dude i actually called it it's two pixels off one two look at that one two see i hey I, I know my china i know my china all right so uh you, you're gonna put that down so uh so there and so where would your first um, production building be, it would be very, very close to the Imperial Ac Academy because you want your Imperial officials to all be like centralized around the Imperial Academy. So I would go for a spot like this. So this this will be the perfect spot just here uh, because what that's going to do is that's going to enable me to just quickly drop in, drop off like that. And then from there, I can build out the rest of my production facilities, as you can see, and then it goes around like that. Uh, so th that, would be, that would be it. And by the same token, like you can start it on the bottom. You just find the middle. Uh, and then go out one like that. And then that's always going to put you on the grid uh, and make it a lot easier for you and your production in the late game. As I mentioned, you can actually fit up to 32 uh, production facilities around the Imperial Academy. Uh, we can we can see if uh, if we can do it out over here. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you guys can just trust me, right? Like, uh, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm a trustworthy guy, right? So let's drop that bad boy down. Uh, and then, so... There it is. One, two, three... Come on. Don't tell me I can't build out here. Wait, I gotta uncover that before I can build it? I didn't even realize that. One, two. So that's half right there. And then... Oh, I don't... I, don't, I think the town center's blocking it. Oh, it is too. So that should be 15. 13? Oh, right. Because I didn't do this side. Uh, so one there and then one there. So that's 15. And then that's the 16th one there. And then you've got 16 on the other side. So that's how it works. Uh, and it is, it's, it's very, very effective in the late game of, of generating tax. I'm not kidding you. You can generate upwards of, uh, 2000 tax with Imperial officials in the late game. It, it is, it's absolutely ludicrous. Um, so that, that is essentially it. Uh, other than that, um, I, I will be releasing like a, a full China guide. This is literally one build order where we just talk about sort of like the minutia of the build order and China. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing a full China guide. I suspect it's probably going to be about four or five hours long. It's going to be big. I'm a, I'm a China enthusiast, a China main. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to playing some China on the ladder. Go, go crush some noobs.